Standard & Poor's has revised its outlook on Uganda to negative, although the ratings agency affirmed the B plus uh, B long and short term sovereign credit rating. Joining us now for a closer look at the rationale behind the change is Ravi Batia, Director of Sovereign Ratings at Standard and Poor's. Ravi, good afternoon to you and thank you for your time. Now, I was just speaking to Sunil, the president of uh, the African Securities Exchanges Association, and he is talking about the story of Africa and the development of this index that covers 19 African markets uh, by FTSE, the FTSE Group which we know globally is respected for calculating indices. At the same time, you guys are saying the outlook on Uganda, one of the constituents of uh, that index, is actually not so rosy and you're cutting the, uh, the outlook on your rating. Why so? Yes, well, um, it basically, uh, Uganda is very heavily reliant on donor funds. Um, and recently there's been a bit of a crisis in as much as there's been the uh, misappropriation of some of the donor funds. This has led to several bilateral donors um, uh, cutting aid, uh, which is required for Uganda to finance its, uh, its fiscal deficit and also it's required on, uh, uh, on the external side as well. So uh, given its very heavy reliance on donor funds, uh, this incident, uh, you know, f uh, we decided to flag it as a negative outlook. The donors are reviewing their processes. Um, the government is also looking into this. And as donor relations stabilize again, the likelihood is that uh, it could potentially revert uh, back to stable. Um, if things, of course, uh, get worse and there's a further cut in donor funds, um, then uh, the rating could go down uh, a notch to, to single B. Yeah. Um, yeah, but as I said, it's the very heavy reliance that Uganda has on, on donor funding. Yeah. Just how close was Uganda to it's, losing uh, its uh, uh, B plus rating? Uh, Ravi? Well, uh, what, uh, in the first instance, we have moved the outlook to negative. Um, which flags that there's a, a one in three chance that it could go down to a single B. That's still uh, a, a less than 50%. So it's a one in three chance um, that it could go down. Um, and, and we're waiting and watching this uh, issue with the donors and whether the donors will come back to the table with their full funding um, or potentially whether Uganda will find alternate sources of funding to finance its fiscal uh, deficit. Uh, and also to support it on the external accounts. Ravi, hi, Samantha here. Just looking at the Deputy Secretary uh, for the Ugandan Treasury saying that as a result of donor aid being pulled, that 2012-2013 budget is going to have that gap of the $260 million. Now that's about 6.2% uh, of GDP. I mean, how is this going to be funded if donors don't, if that donor relationship isn't repaired? Uh, what are the options here? Is the Bank of Uganda going to have to come in with increasing its auctions? <coughs> Uh, yes, that's, uh, that's one possibility. Um, I, I think the other issue is that we have to differentiate between uh, grants and uh, concessional lending. And the donors have, uh, have uh, largely up to now cut back on grants. So there is a chance that they could still get funding via the, via the concessional lending window. So there's still, uh, there's still some options. They could, um, uh, they could issue more in the domestic market. They could fund it that way or they could go back for uh, concessional funding, or uh, there are various other options as well, um, which, th which they could look at. Ravi, you also made note of kind of the longer term views on the outlook for the economy, given the fact that you say that Uganda's population could in fact treble by 2050. Now that's gonna put a lot of pressure on the state, which it, uh, on the short term basis, under, under a lot of pressure right now to really just uh, come up with the funding uh, requirements it has right now. What's your outlook of the economy from a longer term perspective with a growing population and still very low per capita GDP? Yeah, well, Uganda's, um, uh, you know, uh, traditionally maintained good relation, uh, relations with the donors. Um, it's invested well, and growth, if you look over the last uh, 20 years, has been uh, roughly about 6%. So the economy has been growing str uh, strongly. It's also had a spell, uh, a long spell now of, of uh, fairly, uh, of, of political stability. Um, 
so on that level, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been in the long to, uh, term, it's been quite good. Um, of course, GDP per capita is very low. It's much poorer than uh, on a per capita basis than neighboring Kenya. And yes, indeed, the very high population growth rate is a real problem because the headline growth may be good. Um, uh, well, not, not this year because of the drought last year, but in general uh, at around 6%. But if your population is growing at above 3%, your, uh, the impact per capita is substantially lower than if your population was growing a lot slower. Like, for example, next door in, uh, in neighboring Kenya, where the population growth rate is slower um, than in Uganda. Now, Ravi, of course, if we take There's away also this... There's the, uh, the oil coming on stream. Gone. There's the issue of the oil coming on stream. Um, and by 2017 or t around that period, uh, Uganda will be a significant, uh, well, a, a, an oil exporter. We're looking at about 100,000 uh, barrels is due to be produced at that time. So that will also support its, um, uh, it on the fiscal side and externally as well and help uh, transform the economy.